everyone, my name is Sari, you are watching my YouTube channel and my English speaking knitting podcast videos. Uh, if you are new to my channel, my native tongue is Finnish, so I also make Finnish speaking episodes, but this, this is the, the English speaking version of my podcast, as you probably already noticed. And I think this is the eighth episode uh, of the second season. And uh, today I'm wearing the Willa Cardigan. I just released the pattern on Ravelry and it was in collaboration with Rain Cloud and Sage Yarns. Um, this is their homestead base. It is 100% uh, German Merino and it is a lovely uh, airy rustic yarn. So it was such a pleasure to work with. It's undyed. Uh, so this is the natural color. And it's like this room of, of white. The Willa Cardigan has like these um, oversized sleeves. Uh, like vol volume sleeves with slim, slim cuffs. There's the cable and bubble pattern also on the sleeves as well as on the front of the body and on the back and it has this uh, slightly oversized boxy boxy fit and a raglan sleeves and my favorite part about the the cardigan is the the folded button band so it looks really finished and and stays nicely in place and the inspiration for this cardigan came from um, Rain Cloud and Sage. They have this Betty's sweater um, design on their tote bags and they have also pins with the same design. So when we started to discuss about the, this design with Ruth, um, I proposed that I would make uh, a similar card, um, cabled cardigan as is uh, on, their, on their logos. So that's how um, the Willa cardigan came along and I named the cardigan Willa. Um, first of all, it's a really nice uh, name in my opinion, but Villa means wool in Finnish. So this is like my love letter to, to everything woolen and the friends I have made through knitting. So I wanted to, to have all my favorite uh, knitting elements in this cardigan. So there's mustache, there are cables, there are also some twisted stitches in the cables and some bubbles. So all my favorite things um, combined into to one cardigan. And I absolutely love wearing this. And like I said, I have just published the pattern, so it's available on Ravelry, in my Ravelry store, and the link to the pattern is below this video. Um, and publishing patterns and, and selling them is kind of the thing that I was actually going to talk about in today's video. So the main, main topic of today's video is going to be uh, pattern prices. Um, and also test knitting and test knitter compensations. And before I start talking about that, um, uh, I want to uh, like make clear that um, the discussion about um, pattern prices has been quite heated on on Ravelry and I've been following it quite closely. I still haven't really made up my mind, so I don't have any um, answers for you in this video. Um, I'm still trying to form my opinion on this matter, so there are going to be um, asking quite many questions during this episode, but not giving as many answers as, as I'm asking questions. And I hope um, you will respect my space. So this is a very personal matter to me. I'm going to be quite frank about my finances. So 
um, please respect my my space and my my privacy when you are uh, commenting on this video. Um, first of all, I want to say that I know I am privileged in the sense that uh, first of all I have something that is called free time. Uh, I have a day job that um, provides me with so much income that I have a luxury called free time. And second of all, uh, I'm privileged in the sense that during that free time I can knit for fun. Um, I have enough money to buy um, yarns that people call luxury yarns, so high-end yarns. And um, also, I know it's. I have chosen myself to turn my knitting hobby into extra work, so uh, extra income. Um, I make enough money in my day job that I don't have to work in the evenings. So this is something that I have myself decided to do. And I know uh, that is a privilege. So I'm still trying to think about what, what I'm going to say today. Um, this is quite a hard subject for me. Um, many people think that um, I make a lot of money with my patterns. Um, I know I'm a fairly well-known designer. Uh, I have had my patterns in, in well-known publications and I've worked with well-known yarn companies. And I have quite a lot of patterns already. Uh, available on Ravelry. But the truth is that um, I still don't make enough money with my patterns that uh, I could quit my day job and start um, working as an um, independent designer or freelance designer full-time. Um, that's kind of the dream that um, I would love to do to be able to um, pick myself what what designs I want to work with and what yarn I want to work with and how much I want to work or how little I want to work and I kind of be my own boss but at the moment that is not possible. Um, I am not uh, able to get enough money from my own designs. To, to be able to live on that salary only. So everything I made make through um, my own designs is just extra money for us. And only during the past three months, uh, I have started to make more than a couple of hundred euros per month. So I just checked um, on Ravelry and during, if, if I divide what I've been making during the past six months, um, I would make, I would have made 1,100 euros per month um, on my rubbery pattern sales. And in Finland, that is not even close uh, to the kind of money that you could live on. And those numbers are before taxes, so I still have to, to pay the VAT taxes as well as um, my own income taxes. So that is about half uh, of the, the, the income as well as all the insurances and everything else. So that's not quite a lot of money that... Um, I like pocket from from that income. Um, for the fr first few months when I started to to sell my patterns on Ravelry, I only made something like thirty euros 
per month and um, after um, or since last year when I started to like really put more effort on my own patterns and I started to publish more patterns the income has uh, gradually grown uh, and like I said um, about a year ago I made about 100 euros per month uh, on Ravelry and last autumn it was something about 300 euros um, the average wage in Finland is, I think it's something like 3,500 euros. So if I make 1,000 euros per month um, on my pattern sales on a Ravelry, that would equal about one and a half weeks of work if I was aiming for the the average salary in Finland and the work that I put into my own designs is more than one and a half weeks worth of, uh, of um, hours. Um, for example, it takes me Actually, I have never calculated how many hours uh, I need per a day, but let's say I need four hours a day and it would probably take me about a month to need um, a pullover like this. So let's quickly calculate four hours four hours a day um, for 30 days. It's 120 hours to need a, a cardigan like this. And if I ca um, divide it by 40, so it's three full work, work weeks. So 40 hours is one work week, so 120. Uh, hours is three work weeks and so it would take me three full work weeks from eight to four uh, five days a week to knit a cardigan like this and um, on top of that the pattern writing and grading I would say that would take me about two more more days then test knitting uh, test knitting phase is usually two months and um, during those two months um, I'm kind of like always on the call so when a test knitter sends me a message um, I try to be go as quickly to my computer and check what they are asking and make corrections and answer them back so kind of like I'm always on the call whether it's evening or Sunday or, or a holiday, uh, I'm ready to answer my test knitters. So it would probably take me one month altogether uh, if I calculate taking photos, um, photoshopping the photos, editing, editing the pattern, uh, the layout, uploading it to Ravelry. Um, promoting it on Instagram and so on. So let's calculate one month of work for this cardigan. And to make the like average wage in Finland, I should earn 3,500 euros um, in pattern sales for this cardigan. And now let's stop here. Let's assume I do everything myself, so um, like I kind of do at the moment. So if I were to use a professional photographer, uh, I would still have to pay the photographer. It's a couple of hundred of euros. Um, I would have to pay the model um, another couple of hundred euros. Uh, if I wanted to use uh, somebody for hair and makeup, I would have to pay them as well. Um, for the tech editor, 50 to 100 euros. So that is al almost already um, easily 
600 euros um, extra that I have to pay plus uh, the yarn if I if I'm not collaborating with with um, a yarn company I usually pay all the yarn myself so it's easily um, 100 to 200 euros in in yarn so I want to get 3,500 euros per month to, to have the average salary in Finland before taxes and everything. Um, and I have to pay 600 euros um, to, to tech editors, to photographers, so on, and a couple of hundred euros for um, for for uh, to yarn, so that is four thousand three hundred euros approximately that I would have to get in for this pattern for my work to be sustainable and to be uh, paid for all the hours that I work. Um, I have never made that much money with any of my patterns. So there you are. This work is not sustainable for me. Um, I could call this my hobby, a hobby that I get paid for, but the truth is I would love to do this as work that, that would provide me with enough income um, so that I could do this as my full-time and only job. And I would love to have free time as well on top of that. So I would love to only work from eight to four, five days a week, never on weekends. But it's not possible. It's not possible for me. I work full time at the moment, um, seven days a week, even on my holidays, even when we go to Greece and I'm lying by the pool, I need. Um, even uh, on Saturday nights, when we watch movies at home and drink drink uh, red wine, I need I need all the time, and I work on patterns all the time, and I'm constantly thinking about patterns. So this is in no way sustainable for me at the moment. But since I love it, it's something that I have chosen to do myself, and I want to do it. That's why I do it. I I enjoy it, but. It doesn't provide me with enough income for it to actually um, pay for all the hours that I, I put into it. And that's a, something that I've been thinking about a lot. There has been a discussion about pattern prices and some people think that um, we should uh, put the pattern prices higher uh, at the moment. My some of my patterns are free on on Ravelry. Um, some of my older patterns are for three or three and a half euros, and the newer patterns, uh, for example, the Villa Cardigan is eight euros, and for accessories, I usually nowadays uh, have six euros. So that is really really low and. I'll just quickly calculate the 4,300 4, euros divided by 8. I should sell 538 patterns, Willa patterns, to um, make the one month salary. And I'm quite sure I will never sell that amount. Um, my best-selling patterns are the Poet, um, the Irish Hat, and the Mackenzie Shawl. Those are the patterns that I have made most money with. Um, for, for the Mackenzie Shawl, because this brioche shawl, I have made um, approximately the same amount of money as for the iris hat. And when you compare these two uh, designs, 
it's obvious that it's faster to knit this hat and also to write the pattern for this hat than for this shawl. I knitted this shawl for a couple of months and I paid the yarn for myself. So these are two skeins of Madeleine Tosh and two skeins of uh, Hedgehog Fibers. So approximately 120 euros in yarn. And also for this one I paid the yarn myself. And this, these are uh, one skein of Hedgehog Fibers Skinny Singles and one skein of Hedgehog Fibers uh, Kid Silk Lace. And they are approximately 65 euros altogether. So if I wanted to make more profit, um, I should start only making small patterns because I can knit a hat like this in just a couple of nights. It's really easy to write the pattern and I don't have to put that much money in the yarn. It's not profitable for me to knit a scarf like this because it takes so much longer time for me to knit a scarf like this. Um, I would probably knit um, 10 hats in the time that it takes me to knit a shawl like this. And lately I've been working on the Duny shawl. It was this one with the bubble, bubble pattern. And during the time that I've been knitting this one, I've started to think about the pattern prices and all the time that I have put into this pattern. And I kind of know all the time that I'm knitting this, I don't want to sound bitter, even though I say this, but I've realized that I will never sell enough patterns of the Duny that I would get paid for all the hours that I put into making this shawl. And when I started to design, my main idea was to, to um, kind of like knit for myself um, and if somebody wanted to work with my pattern, fine, but the main thing for me was to get the kind of clothes that I wanted to wear and knit what I wanted to knit. And it's still kind of my main point. That's why I started to make the Duny shawl because I wanted a shawl like that. But during these past few months that I've been knitting it, I've started to realize that I, if I want to work um, full-time as an independent designer, I can't work on whatever I want. I have to think about the, the profit that I will turn. So I can't knit shawls like that just because I want a shawl like that and um, not think about how many people will buy the pattern because that's not profitable for me. Uh, I should start thinking about... Um, I, I hate the word commercial, but I should start thinking about this more commercially. I should start working only on patterns that I know that sell well if I um, want to get the most profit. And I shouldn't work on cardigans or large shawls or sweaters because they take so much more time, so much more yarn. And I have to grade them for more sizes than a pair of socks or a hat. So grading this for, for more or less sizes is so much easier than trading um, um, a whole um, cardigan. And for example, this is the Growing Clothes hat that I designed for Making Stories and Friends uh, ebook. And I made three sizes. So 
For a hat, there's like really no point of making six or seven different sizes because people's head don't vary that much and because of the ease of the hat, it fits quite many uh, heads. So you don't have to like do, do so many different sizes. So two to three sizes for a hat is enough and it already makes the pattern unisex. But at the moment I've been um, making my sweater patterns from size XS to double XL and some patterns even go to triple XL but that's like six or seven uh, times to work and to calculate all the measurements, all the stitch counts, um, all the amounts of decreases, uh, how the pattern looks, uh, how many cables to fit and so on for six or seven different sizes. Of course it takes a lot of more work than a hat. And, and for example, for a hat, um, have you ever seen a hat pattern that is um, seven or eight pages long without all the charts and pictures? No, me neither. Uh, my hat patterns are usually a couple of pages long compared to I just finished writing the Wayne pullover pattern and it's seven pages without any photos Willa with photos Just a few photos is 11 pages long um, So That's a lot of work uh, and if I sell a hat pattern for 6 euros and a cardigan for 8 euros and it takes me two nights to, to knit a hat, so let's say 10 hours to knit a hat and 120 hours to knit a cardigan plus all the work that it goes into writing the pattern and, and grading it because this has less sizes, it takes me considerably less time to write the pattern. So 20 hours of work for this one. So half a week, half a work week's worth. And let's calculate if I have the salary of 3,500 euros and So I should only make 450 euros um, for this hat for it to be profitable. Um, if, if I spend half a work week knitting and writing the pattern and if I sell it for 6 euros I should only sell 72 um, hat patterns to make profit. So if I calculated something like 500 um, euros for this one, or 500 patterns for this one and 72 patterns after I start to make profit um, for this one, well, why should I make uh, sweater designs and then why should I make anything cabled because it's so much easier for me to work something simple like this and again why would I work anything in fingering weight yarn when I need it so much more quickly with DK or worsted weight yarn. Yeah. The numbers are rough, I know the truth is rough and I should start if I if I only think about profit and numbers I should only make hats. Maybe I start doing I start doing that. Um, 
to get more real with numbers, let me just find, just open my rivalry quickly. Two by two hat. Um, I have sold 74 copies of it. So, and I sell it for five euros. 370 euros. I have made 370 euros with this and I baked the yarns myself. I have made two, two different um, samples. So I have the gray one and I have the pink one. So about 60 euros for yarn. So 310 euros I have made through this pattern. Um, Another pattern. Let's see. My self published patterns. Um, just quickly calculating. I made four different samples. Um, of the more honey hat, so there are quite many different sizes for this hat. There's the small watch cap, then there's um, a longer cap and a really slouchy person as well as all those options for men's sizes as well. And I needed this in Brooklyn Tweed's uh, arbor, which is quite expensive. I have made 175 euros with this pattern and I think I have used at least 100 euros for the yarn so not quite profitable this one either. Um, socks. These are my Jules socks. Let's see how many patterns I have sold. Jules, 23, 23 turns of the Jules socks. I sell them for 3.5 euros, so 80 euros. I paid 30 euros for the Hedgehog fibers, so 50 euros I have made with this pattern. So, like I said, it's not very profitable. And for pullovers, I sh there's um, no point for me to start making anything small and intricate like this puss pullover with small needles and fingering weight yarn, because this takes ages for me to knit. I should only start making stuff with at least worsted weight yarn, preferably bulky yarn, so I can knit them up really quickly and grate them really quickly and so on. So like I said, this is not profitable for me. And then we start start talking about pattern, pattern prices, whether um, I should um, try to like um, put my pattern prices higher. Um, if we think that it takes me one month to to um, write the pattern, and um, What was that calculated? 4,300 euros after, if, if I would be using professional photographers, professional models, hair and makeup and, um, and uh, tech editors, but let's, let's take the professional photographers, let's pretend that I only use the tech editor, I buy the yarn myself, well, let's scrap that, I use the tech editor, I get the, the yarn um, for free from the yarn company, 
uh, I want to get 3,500 euros per month. Um, so I only have to pay about 100 euros for the tech editor. I get the yarn for free. So 3,600 euros I should get in uh, for, for a pullover. Let's pretend um, I sell 100 patterns, which is a really, it's a lot for me. So the pattern price should be 36 euros, not eight. So the pattern prices are in no way um, going in hand, hand in hand with what the designers actually make. There are a couple of uh, designers that uh, make a lot of money and for them um, I understand that they don't want to to put the pattern prices higher because they already sell enough and of course you have to like sell or you have to like find find the balance either you sell one pattern for 10 euros or two patterns for five euros you you get the same amount of money in and you have to find a balance that works for you but for those people to kind of set the example if if the really famous designers charge only five or six or eight euros for their patterns there's no way a less known uh, only like a beginner designer can charge more for their patterns so they also have to sell their patterns with the same lower price and like I have already um, shown you um, I don't make um, enough money compared to the hours that I put into this work so it doesn't work it doesn't add up and I still don't know what to do with um, with the pattern prices should I put them higher and then uh, people start uh, complaining that I discriminate against others because there are people who don't have uh, enough money to to pay for the patterns I don't want that uh, I don't want people to to feel that my pattern prices are are out of uh, their range this is the the hard part with globalization that um, kind of like you you can't expect that um, people make in as much money um, over the world so for example in Finland five euros is quite a little of money but in some other countries five euros is a lot of money and even in Finland five euros for some people is a lot of money and for some people it's nothing so you can't really compare it like that but then again you can't expect um, everybody to have money to buy everything it doesn't work like that you can't go to, to Gucci store and and say that you have to lower your prices because I don't have money to buy your bag. It doesn't work like that either. And if I want to make a living with my patterns, I can't be expected to do charity at the same time. And even though, like I said, I, I'm privileged in the sense that I have free time and I can do extra job if I want in my free time, that still doesn't mean that that I shouldn't be paid for for my or compensated um, for my my time and my work. So it doesn't work like that, and it's a really hard thing for me. I don't know what to do, and I, I'm going to go through my pattern prices. And for example, if I have a really simple pullover pattern. I'm going to uh, price it lower than something uh, more complicated like this because the fact is it took me less time to knit and um, make the less complicated pattern that it takes me to make a more complicated pattern. Like if you go to 
to um, buy clothes. Of course, a simple um, college sweater without any adornments costs less than, than something that is like really complicated. And that, that's something that uh, everybody understands. So from now on, I think I will adjust my pattern prices so that it reflects the time and effort that took me um, to produce the pattern. So sock and hat patterns will still be lower than sweater patterns. But for example, like I said, you can't really compare these two patterns, like time-wise, how much time it took me to produce these two patterns. So I think this pattern should be um, priced lower than this one. So that's something that I've been thinking about a lot. And the second thing that I've been thinking about a lot is the designer um, test knitter compensation. That's something that also has been um, something that be, people have been talking about a lot on Instagram. And that's another thing that I've been thinking a lot and I still haven't formed my opinion on. Uh, I think it's wrong for me to at the same time say that um, I should be fairly compensated for all the work that goes into producing a pattern and then at the same time I use test knitters for free or for the the price of the pattern so they get one free pattern and and some visibility on my Instagram account. Um, that's not a fair compensation for their work because their work is really important to me. They spot a lot of mistakes and they help me a lot um, with my spelling and and to promote the pattern by sharing photos and, and promoting my patterns. So I would love to be able to pay my test knitters, but as I've already shown you, I don't have money to even pay myself for the work that I do. There's no way for me to pay my test knitters. And this is something that is really hard for me and I've been thinking whether to still use test knitters and make sure that they understand that it's voluntary work. But I kind of hate using voluntary work so that I myself make profit. I absolutely I love voluntary work and, and so on if it's for a common cause, but but for me to turn people's voluntary work into my own profit is not something that sits right with me and that's something that I've been thinking about a lot and I've been thinking about the option of not using test knitters at all anymore from now on but um, rather pay the tech editors more for their work for for more rounds of tech editing and more thorough check of my patterns because now I've been kind of like um, it doesn't really matter if there's some mistakes in the pattern because the test editors will will spot that but if I don't have the test editors um, the risk is more on me like the way it should be but then there's more of a risk that there is um, a mistake in my pattern um, so I'm not sure like from the consumers side of the, the affair if you buy a pattern would you prefer it uh, to not have been test knitted um, and if there's a mistake uh, you notify me and I fix it immediately or that I use test knitters and the probability of, of there being mistakes is lower but at the same time you know that I haven't paid the test knitters anything for their, their work. <laughs> That's a question that I've been pondering a lot lately and I still don't know how to do it 
I kind of feel like I shouldn't use Destiny Terrace anymore. It's more ethical that way because then the risk is more on me. I should do the work better and all the, the like promoting the pattern is only on my shoulders like it should be because I'm the only one profiting from the promotion of the work. So I would love to hear your thoughts about um, both these uh, matters um, on pattern pricing, what you think of it, and also on the destinator compensation. Like I said, I don't have um, final answers yet. I haven't formed my my final final um, opinion on this matter yet. But the truth is, um, I don't make a living with my designs only. I don't get paid for all the hours that I put into designing. I cannot afford to use uh, professional photographers, models, anybody who does hair or makeup. I've only recently started to use tech editors. Um, I can't compensate my designators for the work that they put in. Um, if I had to buy all the yarn myself that I use, I wouldn't be able to use all the yarns that I have used recently. That's, that's the simple truth. So, no, um, this work is not sustainable for me at the moment. That, that is the ugly, ugly truth. Um, I keep thinking about these matters and um, following the discussion happening. And this is just my experience on the thing. Um, so, like I said, no, no answers yet, but a lot, lot of things to think about. And I'll keep you posted um, when I have something more to say. But that's everything for today. Um, I'll try to film a new episode soon and then I will show you what I've been knitting and stuff like that. Um, more, more lighter um, news uh, in the next episodes, I hope. But that's everything. Bye.